do you think Freemasonry will stand the test of time when there are so many distractions out there? <laughs> yes, it, it will. And if it doesn't, it's because of the neglect of the members. What is the social impact of Freemasonry in post-emancipated Jamaica? Well, I tell you what, there are lodges, Phoenix Lodge and some of the other lodges that spend a lot of money in the country for doing good. I must tell you, I think All or nearly all of the lodges exist to help in some way some persons um, because it can't be that you have a, a, a group of people who come to a lodge and drink with and, and say to prayers and things at the lodge. Um, I, the way I see it, the, the lodges who are properly run, they are a great asset to Jamaica because of their wanting to help because of their willingness to understand. And um, that, that, that's the way I see it. We would not have had Freemasonry if we didn't have England, because it is, to the best of my knowledge, something that was started by the British. Mm -hmm. And all the things that we do in the English Constitution are following our masters. So is, are you of the view that there is a link to colonialism between Freemasonry and colonialism? Yes. Reach Jamaica from the foreign. foreign. Um, Without that, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have a uh, with, the, with just a few exceptions, right? Um, Freemasonry is probably the only institution which has not severed its ties or its connection with the imperial head, colonial mm -hmm. system. Why, why is this so? Um, I think that. We have learned a lot because of our association with the UK. Um, and I must tell you that looking objectively, we would not have reached the stage, this stage with Freemasonry if we didn't have the groundwork and had from the Grand Lodge of England the, the questions that need to be answered. Um, the Grand Lodge of England is a serious place. I know you are in the, you, or you were in the insurance business. I am you, in you're still, you still are. Yes, I, I own ICWI. That's right. Which you built. Which you built. Yeah. So could you just tell us about your early years in the business? How did you get started? How did I? And tell us about your journey. How did I get started? I. When I left school, my father's 
friend. Um, a friend of your father. Yeah. My first job was at the police headquarters, um, and I was looking at helping the police top man, um, and I worked with them for. Probably two, no, probably about a year and a half. And it was nice because they had a talk shop downstairs. Um, and it showed me how the police work. And it showed me that our police force was extremely good where others are saying, no, 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 no. Uh, and I have, since I got that thing, I, um, I realized how difficult it is to run a police station, um, because the men who are bad are trying to kill you, the people who don't have any money trying to kill them. So it is 